I was only two years old when my granddad, Ivan Kalinich, died in 1998. He was a loving family man, yet he kept many secrets that we would soon uncover. For the first time, this film will bring together all we knew about Ivan to tell his story directly from the people who knew him best, his family. Hello, I'm Michael Kalinic. I'm talking about my dad, his life during the war and after the war when he came to England. Well, during the war, it was it came from a town called Tukla, which was in the Ukraine, but now it is in Poland because the borders changed. We knew his mother had died in childbirth when he was two. What we didn't know was that in 1942 his father died and that was when my father was taken as slave labour to Austria. When the Nazis invaded, it began the Holocaust of the Ukraine. Many people were killed and many others were forced to work for the German war machine. Yeah, telling me a time he was working in a prison and this was sort of after the Germans invaded and I was working, looking after this prison. And the Germans came and said, right, we're going to burn the prison down. So they opened the doors up and let everybody out. The Germans had gone by then. And there was a Jewish girl, and my dad gave him his coat and said, put this coat on, at least you might have a chance of getting out. Because if the Germans realise that you're Jewish, then, you know, you might have problems. So the girl escaped. Uh, where she got to, they never got in touch again. So I assume she ended up being safe. This act of kindness still wouldn't spare Ivan from the horrors to come. When I was working in a factory in Austria, slave labour, doing aircraft parts, and when the Russians advanced, of course then people moved on, and they told everybody to burn all the identity, all the papers, because if the Russians got them, they'd probably show no mercy. The Russians didn't show any mercy. For most, fleeing was their only chance of survival. Well, he's in the Wushin sector and he got to Linsk, where it was a double city, where he had the river Danube running through the middle. He uh, befriended a priest who lent him his identity and he got on the tram because the tram was that packed and he was at the back, the Russian guards came on and said, everybody's got a pass, will he hold it up? He held his up, and the tram was allowed to go over the bridge into the American sector. Some, however, weren't as lucky as Ivan. There were stories he'd, he'd told about those who went into the British sector. Um, and again, because they knew they were they discovered they were going to be sent back, um, and one was of a, a woman with a bundle <clears throat> and she went to the side of the bridge and she smashed the bundle against the bridge and threw it into the river and it unfolded as a baby and <clears throat> sorry it was a case of she would rather kill her own child than the child be murdered by the Russians. For all those that had died, Ivan had managed to survive. He was soon taken in by the American army in Austria. When he got to the American sector, there was in the American army, as a, like a civilian worker, looking after the army lorries, the GMCs, or General Motor Company, and what he did was to go and look after the lorries, do maintenance, he used to pull in the lorry and say, you know, he wants to check it out, it's not working, or it's broke down, and usually he wants gasoline. So they said, how many gasoline? And he said, oh, well, five cans. So he put three cans in the lorry, and two cans he used to use and sell at the black market. As much as he found safety in the American sector, he wouldn't stay there for long. Well, when he was in the American sector, he found he had relatives in America and he got in touch with them and they sent him $6,000 so 
so he could get to America. Plus as well he had an affidavit from the American government to say he could come to go to America. But when he checked out, well, wanted to go there, they only let in 42,000 people through. And unfortunately he wasn't in that 42,000. So he decided to come to, to England or Great Britain because he thought a different Allard zone, he might get to America quicker. But being a different Allard zone, of course the affidavit were useless. Ivan travelled to Britain, but never went to America. Instead, he stayed in England, finally found himself away from the death and destruction he'd witnessed in Eastern Europe. Well, it's very hard working. He liked work. Uh, sometimes he liked work a bit too much. Very lucky. I think he had a bit of a charmed existence. He also liked to um, participate in, in family things and what have you. First thing I always think of when I think of my dad is a very um, helpful man, very kind, um, always in a pair of overalls. I always remember him in his overalls because he was always working. So, yeah, that's, I think, what I first think of. <laughs>